everybody, welcome back to more RPG Maker MZ tutorials. In this lesson, we will go over how to store a variable. There are three different types of variables you can use. Switches, which are booleans, variables, which are integers, and finally strings. Strings are the most complex one of the lot, but I'll go over each one of them for you guys. We're going to go to this map to make our testing for the, our variables. Let's start by changing, let's start by making a switch variable. So, let's start by right clicking and clicking quick event creation and click switch. As you can see, there's a switch menu. You have 20 blank booleans to start with. You can name them whatever you want. So let's just name, we'll just name one of them, we'll use this one for later. So we're going to type is female protag. This switch determines whether the protagonist is male or female. And we'll use it a lot. And now we get to choose the image for the switch. We're going to make it just be, uh, how about this red lever? That's good. No. Now let's start our player here and make sure we have this set. see the lever switches states and internally the switch has become from off or or false to true which is on now next let's figure out how to make ourselves a normal variable for this we need to go to events let's make a new event let's call this one int test Let's just, uh, hmm. no, not, let's not use that. Let's use this panel. Let's turn on direction fix just for reference. Now, as you can see, let's change the event so we can get an int variable to be stored. To do this, you could choose control variables. Oh yeah, you could also use the control switches and tab to change switches on the fly. Let's do control variables. For single variable, you could choose it to be one variable or a series of variables. You can also do operations for the variables like setting into a number, add a number, subtract another, multiply a number, divide a number, but it does not give a remainder. It divides the number but drops the remainder. If you want the remainder, use mod. So we're gonna set so we're gonna set this to zero. I'm just gonna call this a sample variable. And it's going to set this to zero. And now let's make sure that we know that this thing is set to zero. Now, let's learn how to enter a variable ourselves. Let's do a new event, int. Let's see, where is it? Oh yeah, let's use uh, this blue thing right here. Now, now for this one, we're going to have it uh, say and now it tells the user to enter a number now we have this input number block we're going to use this sample variable from earlier and you can choose how many digits to enter for this we're going to enter three digits 
Now let's see this in game. Now let's use this. All right, the simple variable sets zero, and let's use this. Enter a number. You can actually use the arrow keys to go up and down. It's like one of those uh, dial thingies, like a combination lock. All right, now we have our int variable set to 90. Let's, let's figure out how to display a variable in text. Now we go to a new text. Now what we do is use this. You just do backslash vn which is this case number one. Let's do this. Backslash V number variable number one. Now let's see this in game. Let's just enter uh, 400. And, and it will remember the number that was entered, too. Next, let's go over self switches. To do this, we're going to make a chest icon. We're going to make a chest event. Let's do this with quick event creation, treasure. And then let's just do, a, let's just do an item. Let's just uh, use it as potion. Now let's take a look inside this event. As you can see, it says Control Self Switch A on, and it has this for Self Switch A. Every event has four local booleans called self switches, which range from A to D. A, B, C, D, right here. Use them wisely, as they can have up to 16 different combinations. Use this very wisely, and it will come in very handy. Anyway, let's save this for now. Finally, let's get into string entering. This is, this is only possible by doing this as an input name for an actor. Let's do this by making a new event to change our actor's name. Let's do this as name entry test. Let's make it be uh, this fairy here. Now let's ask the program what is your name? And next, we need to, we need to do this for. Let me just find it real quick. Uh, if I could find. It's in. Ah, there it is. C control and tab three. Name input processing. You can have it up to be 16 characters. You can have it up to be 16 characters and a minimum of one characters. For this, let's do 12 characters. And let's have it say their name. All right, now we do another slash command, slash n, and since the name variable is the first player in the party, let's do number one. All right, let's do, let's do a run through of this event and see how it works. All right, let's talk to the fairy and enter our name. As you can see, we have this name entry screen where we can enter all these letters and numbers and all these special letters for different languages. Let's just enter it as, let's just enter it as, you can use the arrow keys or you can just click. All right, now that our name has changed, we can, we can see this in the menu. That's everything you need to know about storing variables. Oops, almost closed the game up for a second. Oops. 
Oh well, at least everything's saved when you when we exit the game. Anyway, that's everything you need to know about entering variables and storing them in the system. Keep in mind that whenever you're entering strings, every actor has a string for their name. Use this wisely, and it can be very useful. Have fun exploring the variable system!